Hi everyone and welcome back. Over the last couple of lessons we've been discussing Green's theorem, a beautiful result which connects the line integral over a closed curve to the double integral over the interior of that curve. This is especially useful because computing line integrals can be a real challenge and often converting to double integrals makes the computations easier. However, that's not always the case. Sometimes it's the double integral that's challenging to compute and it's actually easier to perform the computations working with the line integral. We're gonna explore this possibility today in the context of areas. So to start our discussion, let's suppose that we're trying to find the area of this 2D region R. In principle, we know we can compute that using a double integral, the double integral over R of the constant function one dA. But you can imagine that if this region is very complicated, maybe it's not type one, maybe it's not type two, and it can't easily be described using polar coordinates or some other change of variables, then setting up this double integral might be a real nightmare. If that's the case, what do we do? Well, if we get lucky, then maybe this boundary curve C can be easily parametrized and we can convert our double integral into a line integral by essentially using Green's theorem in reverse. Remember, Green's theorem says that the double integral of a very particular type of function, partial Q by partial X minus partial P by partial Y, is equal to the line integral along the boundary of the region, the line integral along C, of p dx plus q dy. So our goal is to somehow connect this double integral to this double integral. If we can find functions p and q such that partial q by partial x minus partial p by partial y is equal to one, well then we have a path. We have a path from this double integral to this double integral and then therefore to this line integral. So our goal is to find these functions p and q. Now it may sound hard to find functions p and q such that partial q by partial x minus partial p by partial y equals one, but it turns out that there are some easy options out there. For example, we could take p and q to be zero and x respectively. Then you would have partial q by partial x equals one, partial p by partial y equals zero, and there you go, the equation is satisfied. Likewise, you could also take PQ to be minus Y zero, or PQ to be minus Y over two, X over two. There are lots of easy choices that can be made. The takeaway here is that when using Green's theorem to compute areas, you can choose any one of these vector fields as your PQ, or you can find something else. As long as this equation is satisfied, you can convert the double integral of one to a line integral involving P and Q. Let's see how all this works in an example. Suppose that we want to find the area enclosed by the ellipse x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. This is the general equation of an ellipse in R2 centered at the origin. It extends a units in the positive x direction and b units in the positive y direction. Now in one of our earlier videos, we actually found the area of this ellipse. It's pi AB. We obtained this by converting the ellipse to the unit circle using a change of variables and then integrating in polar coordinates. But this was a lot of work. Instead of working with the inside of the region, I'm gonna focus on the boundary. The boundary is actually quite easy to parametrize. If you think about it, the parametrization of the unit circle is r of t equals cos t sine t, with t ranging from 0 to 2 pi. Well, I'm going to do something similar, except now I have to stretch out my x-coordinate by a factor of a and my y-coordinate by a factor of b. So my parametrization is a cos t b sine t, with t ranging from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, the boundary of our curve has been nicely parametrized, and now it's time to find the area that it encloses. We know that the area is the double integral over r of one dA, and we're gonna convert this into a line integral. To do that, we have to think of this as the double integral over r of partial q by partial x minus partial p by partial y dA, where we actually get to choose p and q. But in order to make this equality, we need this difference of partial derivatives to be one. 
I could use any one of the standard choices from the last slide, so I'm gonna go ahead and define P to be zero and Q to be X. That was choice number one on the last slide. So with these choices of P and Q, we really do have that this expression is one and we can continue our calculation. The next step is to use Green's theorem. According to Green's theorem, this double integral is really the line integral over the boundary curve C of P dx plus Q dy. Okay, this is Green's theorem. But the advantage is we've already parametrized our curve. We can use the definition of the line integral to solve this problem. We have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of PQ, so that would be 0x, dot the derivative of r of t, that would be minus a sine t, b cos t dt. Notice that since p is 0, the first term in this dot product is going to go away. We're left with the integral from 0 to 2 pi of x, well x here is a cos t, so a cos t times this term here, b cos t. That's a b cos squared t. All right, well, this is not a hard integral to solve. We can pull the a b out, and we can rewrite cos squared as 1 plus cos 2 t over 2. At this point, I know you can find an antiderivative, and you can sub in the bounds, and I'm sure you'll find that the answer is pi a b, just like we had before. Pretty nice, huh? A very clever application of Green's theorem. Here's another example so you can see just how powerful this method can be. Suppose that we want to find the area enclosed by this parametric curve. R of t equals t minus t to the 6, t to the 4 minus t to the 5, with t going between 0 and 1. That curve is traced out for us here, and we are looking for this shaded area inside. Now folks, in the last example I told you that a double integral could be used, in fact we did this in an earlier lesson, but how would you use a double integral to find this area? How would you set it up? This region isn't type 1, it isn't type 2, I don't see any nice change of variables, it's awful. So we're going to need a different technique, and Green's theorem is the key. So let's give this curve a name, we'll call it C. Notice that C is simple, closed, smooth, and positively oriented. That means that Green's theorem applies. The best part is C has already been parametrized for us. All we need to do is choose our functions P and Q that satisfy that partial derivative equation, set up our integral, and solve. For the sake of variety, why don't we pick a different P and Q? We'll set P of x, y to be minus y, and Q of x, y will be zero. This was choice number two on our second slide. So we have the area of R is the double integral over R of 1 dA, and we can write that as the double integral over R of partial Q by partial X minus partial P by partial Y dA. Now using Green's theorem, we can write this as the line integral along C of P dX plus Q dY. At this point, we can sub in our P and Q. We have the integral from 0 to 1, those are the values of t that were given to us, of pq, so that's minus y0, dot the derivative of r of t, that's 1 minus 6t to the 5, 4t cubed minus 5t to the 4, dt. At this point, we can replace our y term with t to the 4 minus t to the 5, expand our dot product, and solve we'll get the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the 5 minus t to the 4 times 1 minus 6t to the 5, and our q term here kills off the other term in the derivative of r of t. So at this point, it's just a matter of solving the integral, and you should get a value of 157 over 330. Kind of an ugly number, but it's pretty amazing that we were able to find this area at all. Thanks, Green's Theorem.